Every few years, something strange happens in the Pacific Ocean. Have you ever heard that extreme weather is expected and that it's due to El Nino? We hear about it every few years. But what exactly is El Nino? In this video, I will explain to you what it is, how it forms, how it affects the planet and how science is racing to predict what it will do next. El Niño is a periodic climate phenomenon that originates in the tropical Pacific Ocean and occurs roughly every three to five years. It is one of the most powerful forces in Earth's climate system. It can change weather around the globe, flood entire countries, trigger wildfires and even rewrite the world's economic forecasts. Centuries ago, fishermen along the coast of Peru noticed that around Christmas time the ocean sometimes turned unusually warm and fish would disappear. They named the event El Niño, meaning the Christ child, because it arrived near the holiday season. It's part of a larger natural cycle known as ENSO. This stands for the El Niño Southern Oscillation. This cycle has three phases. El Niño, this is the warm phase, La Niña, this is the cold phase, and neutral conditions in between. In this video, we'll focus only on El Niño. We'll dive into La Niña in a future episode. Under normal ocean conditions, steady trade winds blow warm surface water westward, from the coast of South America toward Indonesia and Australia. This allows colder, nutrient-rich water from the deep ocean to rise up near the coast of Peru and Ecuador in a process called upwelling. But during El Niño, those trade winds weaken, or even reverse. That lets warm water slide back eastward, away from Asia and toward the coast of South America. Over time, that warm water builds across the central and eastern Pacific, sometimes rising by several degrees Fahrenheit above average. This massive pool of warm water shuts down upwelling, starving, marine ecosystems of nutrients. But more importantly, it transforms how heat and moisture are distributed in the atmosphere. Warmer water heats the air above it, causing it to rise and form storm systems in areas that are normally dry. Meanwhile, regions that usually get heavy tropical rains, like Indonesia and Australia, can suddenly dry out. Today, El Niño remains one of the most powerful climate drivers on Earth, capable of altering global weather patterns for months at a time. So let's have a look how El Niño impacts the world. Because it starts a global chain reaction, shifting weather patterns across continents. Let's begin in the Western Pacific, Australia, Indonesia and Southeast Asia. During El Niño years, these areas often experience serious drought, crops fail, rivers dry up and wildfires rage. In Indonesia, El Niño has been linked to some of the worst forest fires in modern history, including the disastrous haze events in 1997 and 2015. Meanwhile, on the eastern side of the Pacific, Peru and Ecuador suddenly go from dry and desert-like to stormy and flood-prone. Warm ocean water fuels massive thunderstorms, causing flooding, mudslides and billions in damage to homes, roads and crops. Farther inland, northern Brazil, Colombia and parts of the Amazon often suffer through unusual drought. In contrast, southern Brazil, Argentina and Uruguay tend to get hit with heavy rainfall and floods, as the storm tracks shift farther south. Africa also feels the impact, though it depends on where you are. In eastern Africa, El Niño often brings excess rain, especially in countries like Kenya and Tanzania, sometimes leading to floods and disease outbreaks. But in southern Africa, the effect is the opposite. Prolonged drought and crop failure, putting millions at risk of food shortages. 
And let's not forget the oceans themselves. The shutdown of cold water, upwelling of South America, causes marine food chains to collapse. Anchovy and sardine populations crash, starving sea lions and seabirds that rely on them. Warm water also triggers mass coral bleaching in places like the Great Barrier Reef, where delicate coral ecosystems become stressed and die off under heat. It also affects the weather in North America, especially in the winter months. During El Nino years, the Pacific jet stream, those high altitude winds that guide storm systems, shifts farther south than usual. That means storms are more likely to hit the southern half of the country, while the northern states and Canada often stay warmer and drier. For California, El Nino winters can mean heavy rain, flash floods and mudslides, especially in the south. In strong El Nino years, like 1997 to 98 and 2015 to 16, California saw record rainfall, damaged highways and entire neighborhoods washed out. Moving east, Texas, Louisiana and Florida also tend to get wetter winters, with more frequent downpours and an increased risk of flooding. Meanwhile, states like Washington, Oregon and Montana often get less precipitation and a milder winter. Bad news for snowpack and water supplies. In the Midwest, things are more variable. Some years, El Nino brings welcome moisture that helps break droughts. Other years, it brings an odd mix of early warmth and late frost, which can confuse crops and hurt yields. El Nino also plays a big role in hurricane season. It tends to suppress hurricanes in the Atlantic by increasing upper level wind shear, those fast winds that break storms apart before they can form. So, during El Nino years, the eastern Gulf coasts typically face fewer and weaker hurricanes. But in the Pacific Ocean, El Nino actually increases hurricane activity. That means more storms form off Mexico's coast and some of their remnants bring late season rain to the southwest. And for farmers, El Nino is a mixed bag. It can bring much needed rain to dry regions, boosting crops and cattle feed. But too much rain, or rain at the wrong time, can delay planting, cause erosion or trigger fungal outbreaks. So while El Nino starts with ocean temperatures, its real power lies in how it reshapes life and climate across the globe. El Nino might be a natural cycle, but modern science has learned how to spot it coming, sometimes months in advance. It starts with monitoring the Pacific Ocean, using a network of anchored buoys that stretch across the equator. These instruments measure sea temperatures, ocean currents and wind patterns in real time. The data from these buoys is backed up by satellites. All that information feeds into computer models, which simulate how the ocean and atmosphere will behave in the coming months. These models are run by agencies like NOAA in the US, BOEM in Australia and ECMWF in Europe. Scientists look for a few key signals when trying to detect if El Nino is developing. First, they check for rising ocean temperatures in the central and eastern Pacific. When this part of the ocean gets warmer than usual, it's often the first clue that El Nino may be forming. That warm water fuels big changes in wind, air pressure and rainfall. Second, they track changes in the wind, especially near the equator. Normally, strong trade winds blow from east to west. But if those winds start to weaken, or even reverse direction, it allows that warm surface water to move eastward toward South America. That's a major red flag. And third, they watch for shifts in rainfall and cloud patterns. During El Nino, storms that usually form over Indonesia and Northern Australia start showing up much farther east, out in the Central Pacific or even near Peru. That shift in tropical rainfall is a strong signal that the atmosphere is responding to warmer ocean waters. Put all of these signals together 
and scientists can tell when El Niño is on the way, and how strong it might become. But forecasting El Niño isn't easy. One big challenge is called the Spring Barrier, a period during the Northern Hemisphere's spring when predictions become especially uncertain. Around March and April, small shifts in the ocean can tip the entire system toward or away from El Niño, and models often struggle to keep up. Still thanks to decades of research and better tech, scientists can now issue early warnings three to six months ahead, giving governments, farmers and emergency planners time to prepare. But lately, scientists are asking, is climate change making El Niño worse? And yes, we think it is. Let me explain why. There's growing evidence that strong El Niño events are becoming more intense and may become more frequent in the future. Warmer oceans create more fuel for the kind of heat transfer El Niño depends on. And even if El Niño itself hasn't changed much, its impacts are getting amplified. A strong El Niño today stacks on top of already elevated global temperatures, pushing heat waves and rainfall to new extremes. That's what happened in 2016, when a major El Niño helped make it the hottest year on record at the time. Coral reefs suffered, crops failed, and over 60 million people were affected by its knock-on effects around the world. Even in recent years, La Niña periods, which usually cool things down, have still ranked among the warmest years on record, simply because the background climate is so hot. So when the next major El Niño hits, we think it's likely to break records again. So now you know, El Niño isn't just a weather event. It's a global climate disruptor that can reshape our planet's atmosphere, economy, ecosystems and even our daily lives. It's a force we can't ignore, and in a warming world, its impacts may only grow more extreme. But the more we understand it, the better we can prepare. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, because next time we'll dive into El Niño's cold counterpart, La Niña, and how it flips the climate script. Drop your questions below, and I'll see you in the next video.